and anger is fine. There's nothing good or bad about it. It's just choosing to dwell in that feeling or allowing yourself to move through it so that you can rediscover your true essence, which is a loving one. Welcome to the show. How are you? Doing amazing. It's really good to be here. It's been a few years yep. since we've been in the building, but we're doing great. How are you? I'm not too bad. Thanks for asking. No one ever asks. I know. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah, yeah, I'm good. Thank you. Yeah, we noticed those things. Yeah, I really, yeah. <laughs> very thoughtful of you. Yeah. 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 So we, you've never been on the show with me as the host, mm-hmm. but I have been around you before, and I'm dying to tell you the story. Okay. So one day I was flying from Toronto to Los Angeles. I, don't, I didn't know, know. I knew your music, but I didn't know what you looked like. So there's this kind of older woman on the plane, and she starts talking to you guys. And she says, oh, well, you know, yeah, so what what brings you guys to Los Angeles? And I remember both of you, like, explaining to her what you ended up doing as a job. I'm sure you don't have any recollection of this. I recall correctly. I feel like she was just going to L.A. on a girl's trip or something. Yeah. Yeah. Do you remember this? Yeah, I feel like I remember speaking to this woman. I have a, a strange memory. Sometimes it's accurate, sometimes it isn't. But I feel like she saw me wearing a ring or something. Yeah. And she was like, I don't know if it's the same person, but she was like, me and my friend over here were trying to bet that you were a musician or something. Is that that person? <laughs> maybe, so, yeah. maybe so. Maybe so. Maybe so. And I was like, how do you know she goes the ring on your finger? And I was like, oh, OK, cool. I guess, you know, you, you find the patterns. And then yeah. that's how we started talking. It's, it's a moment yeah. I remembered, the kind of, yeah. kind of kindness you gave this person to oh, explain, cool. to spend like an hour on the flight explaining exactly how you make your music. And yeah, I, yeah. I thought, even though I was a bit, being a bit creepy and listening. To yeah. <laughs> hopefully, um, she, hopefully she subscribed. Yeah. <laughs> She's like, what is this? <laughs> Throws her phone out the <laughs> She's like, I should have. An hour I spoke to her. <laughs> no, she takes in the, the album for the, for the last hour of the flight, just takes off the headphones. Oh, I was like, not a fan. <laughs> not a fan. You know, it's mixed poorly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's funny because it's not you guys. It's just a weird. It's a weird mixing issue. It's funny because yeah. we mixed this one ourselves. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I would take that as a personal. Yeah. You this know, time it would personal hurt. Personal attack. Yeah. Well, yeah. I'll tell you this. I think I think the album first is mixed perfectly fine. Um, I have a bunch of questions about it, but um, I, I want to start out by just that thing I was curious about. So the album's called Good People. The first iteration of the group was Good People. We're going to talk about those days in a little while. What's going on here? Is this like, is this a return to form? Is it some nostalgia? Yeah, definitely. I think it's a return to form in many ways. Um, we were talking about nostalgia, and we we're talking about how it's it's like sometimes people want the same movie to be made by the same director or the same album to be made by an artist. I think it wasn't really like that approach. I think we just return to form of who we are as people and why we do what we do and why we create what we create. And I think during that process, it happened to really feel similar Mm. to the first project. Mm. And then we were speaking to some friends and somebody was like, you should call it good people. And Mm. so it kind of just came about like that. Yeah. What what was there to return to? Like, where did, where did you go from, from there? You know what I mean by that? Like, what did you you have to return to? I I think physically it was, um, being in the room together and making it all from scratch together. You know, there were times when we weren't physically in the same room and making things and making ideas, or we were collaborating a lot because we were at that part of our musical journey, just mixing and learning from other people, you know, and, and kind of just experimenting with sound. And we just got back to the roots where in the initial project, it was just Jordan and myself. There was a special energy in the room Mm -hmm. and it was just us there. Yeah. And we would let tracks. We'd be basically. I would be sitting on a microphone, and Jordan would be sitting next to me it's on like a very synth. similar to this. Yeah, mm-hmm. this you know? spacing and yeah. distance, and just start playing some chords. Let the track run, you know, ten, fifteen, twenty minutes, and then when we start feeling uh, and ideas forming, build from there. That's how this, and that that's kind of how we made uh, After Hours as well. It, it, there was no. I want it to sound like this, and I want. Yeah. It was kind of. What are we doing, and why do we feel called to do it now? I mean, as I think yeah. as, a, as a group gets bigger and bigger and bigger, there are more people with their fingers in, there's more attention, there's yeah. more people talking to you, there's more collaborators, yeah. there's more all those things. What I'm hearing is, is that like you, 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 you discovered or you were aware that the magic that, that made you guys the thing that you became had right. become is this thing that I'm looking at right now to yeah. be next to next to one another. And you said, we need to be able to shut all that out, shut everybody out, shut the industry yeah. out, shut everything out, 
and so, and and yeah. be able to bring bring ourselves back to that. Yeah. It, instead of making um, a song that sounded like a song off of that first project, yeah. I think we just um, took the leap of faith and just made music. Yeah. And didn't try to define it at the time and. And it's very yeah. similar to how we made After Hours. We we spent mm -hmm. a few weeks together and then we separated after. Right. And we, yeah. we took time apart and then we reconnected again. And I think that time in between to listen and live with what we had just made and also experience life was very, very crucial and important. Yeah. Uh, because, you, you know, your solitude is so important and come back and be like, okay, so this is this new experience that happened to me uh, mm -hmm. with the song, or this is this new experience that happened to me outside of the song, or I showed this to, you know, a friend of mine and this is what they said. And all yeah. of those little moments that you got to experience because you allowed yourself the time. And I think our generation in general needs to be allowed to have more time to pause, to mm -hmm. think mm -hmm. before just doing, before yeah. acting, even before we came on here. You know, pause, take that moment like, to really think, to, to move yeah. in your brain to the part that plans. Right. And when you're right. on the treadmill like you guys have been, it's hard to take those kind of moments. It's hard to. Yeah, you know? I think it's more of a risk, maybe. Maybe the stakes are higher for people to break the fourth wall and to yeah. kind of be human about it. But yeah. I think we're getting to a point where um, it feels right. Mm -hmm. And we just want to connect with more people that are doing that. Mm -hmm. You know, L let's listen to some of the records. Take a listen to this. Don't run away, don't run away Now these days I feel great, it's okay I'm here on my own, but not for long Hang on, there's another one waiting for you Hang That on. is Waiting For You, the first single from Maja Jordan's there's new album, Good People. Sounds like a great Sade song, by the way, like really beautiful song. But I wanted to talk lyrically. Uh, I was really kind of taken aback by some of the lyrics on this record. Oh, wow. uh, Maj, tell me a little bit about like what you were, how you wanted to approach, the, the, what you wanted this record to be about. It, it's it's an offering of some sort where it's saying, hang on, there's something waiting for you. Don't Don't be so quick or so hard on yourself. And I just wanted to put out love into the world, really. Both of us, we just wanted to put out some love into the world. And there's a particular lyric where I say, no more anger, only love inside. And anger is fine. There's nothing good or bad about it. It's just choosing to dwell in that feeling or allowing yourself to move through it so that you can rediscover your true essence, which is a loving one. Um, that's, what, what do you have hmm. to go through, like, does that come? Did, did you go through something that led you there? Cause that, oh, yeah. That's a place I mean, to get to, you know. Yeah, you you realize a lot of things in life. You know, you we, at, when you get to our age now, your thirties, you've experienced loss of some sort. You know, loss yeah. of a friend, loss of a relative, yeah. uh, loss of a relationship, yeah. loss of home. You know, I left Bahrain mm -hmm. when I was seventeen years old, which is where I was born and raised till I was eighteen, mm -hmm. and I came here alone. So that's these are all things that you when you allow yourself the time, you process it and. Uh, it just comes through, I guess, in, in, in what, you're, what you want to say and what you want to put out into the world to reassure people, to remind them of their humanity and to remind them of the love that they're capable of giving themselves and, and hopefully others. But I felt like you were digging a little bit deeper lyrically on this record than in past records. I mean, I think just in general in our lives, we were digging a little bit deeper, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Uh, and I think it's all connected in that way. Mm -hmm. um, realizing things about ourselves, uh, yeah. about society, um, about uh, art and uh, entertainment and media uh, and the way, you know, there's just such a, a desire for more and more and more all the time when really a lot of us have enough, you know. Yeah. Um, and I think it's just a reminder that whatever we put out is enough, that whoever we are is enough. Your full authentic selves. And yeah, yeah, completely. Yeah. yeah. Did, yeah. Do, am, I, am, I, am I right that you did some of this record in Bahrain? Is that right? Yeah, yeah, we did. Tell me that story. How did that, how did that happen? Well, I, Jordan just asked me, like, what do you want to do for this project? And I was, for some reason, adamant that we have to go do it at home. We why, have to do it. Why were you feeling that way? It just hit me all of a sudden. Like, I've been away from home for so long. I, the pandemic hit, you know, and I didn't see my parents for a long time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you, I'm privileged enough to have a family yeah. that loves and cares for me. Yeah. And I don't go visit them. I don't go see them. I'm so absorbed by this career that's 
focused on this side of the world. Yeah. And I'm just like, what? I've been giving so much of myself to this, so much of my time, and I've been neglecting all of these people who are just waiting for a phone call, waiting to hear from me. Yeah. Uh, who have supported me this entire time. Maybe they were worried about me and confused at times. Yeah. They still support me though, you yeah. know? Mm -hmm. And uh, I wanted Jordan to understand me more. Yeah. So Jordan, you hadn't been before? I went one time for three days. We did a show in yeah. 2018. That was do you it. do well in Bahrain? Do you do? I feel like I do well. Yeah. yeah you know? I love him. He was, yeah. He was, no, but like, yeah. do you feel like I don't mean I don't, <laughs> <laughs> I don't mean I don't mean it like that. Yeah. I don't mean. <laughs> Though, I know, though I'm glad to hear it. Yeah. I feel like I do well. Uh, yeah. I'm so, so close. <laughs> I'm going to I'm gonna get you a shirt that says, I do well. I do well. Yeah, 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 yeah. All of us. Yeah, I you, meant you. the group. Yeah, yeah. 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 And then the back says, at least I think I do. <laughs> I think I, think I, I do. I do. <laughs> it was only three days. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm sure you, but I'm sure there, you you being from Bahrain, I'm sure it's a big deal. No, we, we get there. so much support, so much love. You know, we we get so much support, so much love. And in another way, because, you know, they identify with me as being someone who was born there. That's what I was thinking. You know, yeah. Bahraini, uh, the culturally. And so, yeah, definitely. And then they see someone who's so open to it. Yeah. And I think that's a beautiful thing about our relationship is that we came from two different places in the world, but our, our feelings and our values are very aligned. And our creative values as well are very aligned. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it just, it, to me, it, it didn't really take much thought, I'll be honest. It's, you know, we've, We've made music in my hometown for a decade, yeah. Mm -hmm. And my friend hasn't, you know. That's kind of like where it started, yeah. And then obviously, it's really important if you can to, you know, understand someone close to you a lot more. And you know, I I, I stayed with his family for like a month and a half. Like they have like a Friday family lunch every week. It was just it was great. Yeah. It was it was really good. Um, you know, I gained like ten friends from that, like ten real people in my life. So. You it do was, well in Bahrain. I do well in Bahrain. <laughs> you yeah. do. You really do well in Bahrain. Yeah. yeah. I, I, how was it for you to be making music in your home? It's so different because you 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 come you, you come to Toronto and you start making music there, and your music. I want to talk about this in a second. Actually, ends up defining to, the sound of Toronto. Right. What is it like then to go back to Bahrain and make music? Yeah, I mean, it's it was so enjoyable. It was so happy, and. I was just so relieved to, because when you relieved? say, yeah, like to be there with him and, and get that opportunity, you know, because you don't realize how ridiculous it sounds like, yeah, we did work here for 10 years and I never even made one thing there in 10 years, like in my whole career yeah. with everywhere I've yeah. been in the world, right. all these tours, we've been on three world tours and gone all over and we haven't made a single song in Bahrain. We haven't been around, been present for you know, the next generation, hopefully, of, of creatives that come out of there. And it's so important for humans, if they have the ability to spend time with human beings from different cultures and different places to realize how connected we all are and how aligned we all are really in terms of what makes a good life. And, uh, mm -hmm. you know, because the, the news, they spread all these kinds of things. And you're mm -hmm. like, oh, you know, this place is unstable. Oh, this place has human rights. These, these, these people hate yeah, these people. These people hate these people. Yeah. And it's this and this, the other mentality is is not healthy and it's not going to bring us together. And I think this is just like a, on a human level, one to one. We've resolved some sort of thing where it's like from two different parts of the world. Well, that, that was kind of where I wanted to go is because, I mean, the, the production work that you guys have done and the individual work that you guys have done as a group has been instrumental, ha, 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 in defining, <laughs> in defining the sound of the city. I mean, you know, where I travel around the world, people talk to me about the Toronto sound. When they see my Jays hat, they talk to me about the Toronto sound, yeah. the sound that you are among the architects of. We've that's that's, that's amazing. Toronto. I'm yeah. sure you're aware of it. Not really. It's um, kind of crazy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know if, like, those type of things that's are beautiful to hear. incredible to hear. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if we're ever supposed to digest these things as people. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? Like, people probably meet you, Tom, and mm -hmm. they're just like, yo, you've impacted my life. And they're like, your show. didn't you interview half a good Charlotte one time? And I go, yeah, I did. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Very specific, yeah. <laughs> sure, I understand. Yeah. You don't want to take it in. It'll, it'll mess you up. It, you well, know? it's more yeah. of like if your focus is on uh, quantifying and trying to put an answer in somebody's mouth or an opinion in somebody's mouth before you create something or before you speak to somebody, mm -hmm. um, 
I don't think the el- the outcome is not really going to be there because I think it's just you're overthinking it first place, mm-hmm. and I think it's just kind of the wrong intention. So, mm. yeah. L- let me let me put my journalist hat on for a second. I was doing a bunch of research into to, into you guys before, and I was listening to some interviews with you guys, and I was reading a bunch of interviews with you guys. And um, before I came in here, there's a lot of different origin stories out there about how Magic Jordan started. So, like, I, I saw um, I saw one article that said you met studying at the University of Toronto. I saw another one where it said you met in a nightclub. I saw another one where it said you met at a birthday party. Broken telephone. <laughs> this is the Canadian Broadcasting Corporation. I demand answers. Okay, so I'll tell you. Tell me, tell me, tell you me. We met, at CBC. we met yeah. while attending the University of Toronto, not studying at the same time together, because okay. that's you, confusing. You didn't like, have your books out. No, we didn't have our books out. I'm like, okay. hey, what are you? Oh, yeah. yeah. I dropped my book in the hallway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, he picked it up. Like, yeah, like, yeah. Do you want to make beats? Do you want to study or yeah. make beats? <laughs> yeah. So while attending the University of Toronto, I was in my final year. He was in his first year. He was friends with a mutual friend. He came to my birthday and brought him along as a plus one. Mm-hmm. He was underage, needed, so I needed to sneak him in. Mm-hmm. Yep. And we were outside of the bar called Beaconsfield. Okay. Which, I, if you're from Toronto, I'm sure you've heard of yeah. it. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, we just struck up conversation there, and I realized he had a really eclectic musical taste that aligned with mine. And then, and then we didn't see each other for, like, four months. What were you studying at U of T? I was studying economics. What were you studying? Finance and economics. Commerce. Not an arts degree in between the two of you, by the way. No, I actually failed music history. Oh, my God. Yeah. No, no, my dad was like, get something practical. Yeah, right. Yeah. I understand. And okay. then do whatever yeah. you want. Okay, okay, yeah, okay. Yeah, I understand. Yeah, yeah, I get yeah. it. It's good advice, to be Good fair. advice, yeah. So, you, you, four months apart. I conformed. And, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I conformed. <laughs> four, so, four months apart, and then you get back four together. Four months apart, and then it was like the middle of like a snowy afternoon, like snowstorm in Toronto in February, and I see this guy like, walking to me and I'm with a friend and it's it's Maj. I'm like, yo, it's been like, you know, a while. Yeah. You gotta come to my dorm room. Like, let's actually make it happen this time. So the next day he came over and, you know. Yeah, my class was right next door. Yeah. So we made two songs that day. The first was Chill Pad Deluxe and the second was Hold, Hold Tight. Tight. Yeah. When you released it under under uh, good people, it was anonymous. Your names your names weren't on it. Yeah. Why why, why not? Um so that that lady wouldn't recognize us yeah. on the plane. Yeah. Probably that. <laughs> <laughs> we really were worried about her. Yeah, yeah. yeah. we knew that someday she'd find us. She would find us. She yeah. did on, on, the, on the flight to LA. We've yeah. known her for a long time. Yeah. Where were you yeah. worried about? We went anonymous to like Ellen. You know, <laughs> yeah, like, all literally. of these things just happened. Like we didn't plan. Like we, yeah. I think for me, what I wanted to do was I wanted to put something out. It was out of necessity because I was leaving the country soon. You had to. Uh, yeah, guess. my visa was up. You yeah. know, and so I was like, let's do something. Let's put it out anonymously in case I have to get like a job or something. And they're like, why do you make me? For some reason, I was scared that if you were creatively expressive, you'd get in trouble. Mm. Oh, you were worried that if I was, because you were studying finance and Yeah, yeah, I was like, oh, like someone would look at my resume and be like, oh, but you made this song? Like, no, we can't hire you. You can't be both people. You can't be both. Yeah, yeah, you got to be, you know? So I don't know. All of these fears you get, you understand as you get older, you're like, this is all created in your head. Right. Uh, But we just said, let's make it anonymously and we'll put it out. And it got traction. Did it ever. And uh, it resulted in us getting signed. You know, 40 found us and, and introduced us to Drake and Oliver. And well, yeah, well, now we're here. Let's, let's listen to the record. Isn't that great? That's so good. That was in a dorm room. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. That's so. I should say that's that's whole type from from Magic Jordan, then known as Good People. Dorm yeah. room. Dorm room. Innis. Three hundred one. Three hundred one. I think, think three hundred one. How many hours did it take to make that? Not long. Like man. a day. But even at that point, it was just like I don't know. It was just another file on a computer. It was not really any conversation about making some like album or anything like yeah. that. Yeah. kind of just making music. Yeah. So it starts to take off. People start to pay attention to it. That must be exciting to have a song that you made start to do all right. Yeah. And then uh, for, he said 40 reaches out. Mm-hmm. Um, what? C- can you tell me what, what did it say? Did it say? Because I heard you didn't believe that it was. Yeah, he sent an email. You know, you don't expect a music producer to send an email, right? Like you're like, this is a scam. <laughs> like you're like a music producer calls you on like a golden telephone. And he was like, if you send me $3,000, yeah, yeah. I'll send you, <laughs> send you this. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I'll yeah. sign you. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. So, you know? yeah, yeah. I've fallen for that a couple Yeah, we of times, didn't believe but. it. But, you know, th- that story is out there, you know, and we've, we've spoken about it so many times. 
And basically, we're just so grateful that this man, 40, who is such an amazing person, really, if I have to, he's such an inspiration to me in how to conduct yourself as a human being. And and, and the most successful music producer in Canadian history. Like, it's, it's, it's I mean, it has to be, yeah, right? Yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, those those yeah. songs are, and just an unbelievable ear and just an unbelievable sound. Yeah. But mm -hmm. I, I would understand that he reaches out to you and you're kind of like, I don't know. I don't oh, know yeah. You, it, was like, it was like... I was also out of the country. And so, oh, you were home. So Jordan yeah. had to go meet him in, in, on our behalf. And, yeah. uh, and I were... flew back and I didn't know, I didn't know that I was what I was flying back for. I remember having a dinner. I invited a bunch of friends and I was like, so listen, uh, someone emailed me. He's a producer and he works with this artist called Drake. And everyone was like, what? Are you serious? Like, what are you going to do? I'm like, I don't really know. I just know that he wants to meet us. And so I flew back and I was on a travel visa and he basically was the reason why I immigrated to Canada. He sponsored me, gave me a work visa. He had to call the government and assure them that he would pay me a, f a fair rate. Because like they're like this is a very rare thing that mm. a record label would have a uh, contractor yeah. worker. Yeah. So he got me a work visa, and then bought my first laptop for me. He gave me a monthly, uh, you know, allowance to like get settled. Got found my first apartment for me, and uh, changed my life. Really, he was the main uh, driving force for how I managed to settle in Canada. It must have meant so much to you to have. Um, someone like that just have faith. I mean, I can see it also be, being overwhelming and maybe having some pressure around it. Def it was the first time that I had really been in a recording studio. Uh, mm -hmm. I didn't know what a producer was at that point. So I was meeting this guy who was, you know, incredibly intelligent and well-spoken and older than me. And, um, you know, he, he didn't, he didn't need to give us the opportunity or, or the time he was, he was doing his own thing. And, um, I'm really always grateful for that. Did it feel like something was happening in Toronto at the time? I mean, I had never been in that situation before, so I, I had no frame of reference, you know? Oh, like yeah, if, yeah. If, It was just if, every day. It was the first thing. Yeah, so, you know, if someone was here and they're like, yeah, the studio has never seen any activity like this, this is a lot of, you know, movement in here and a lot of things are being created, then I'm sure they would have that perspective. But for me, I was just in this room and I was surrounded by people that were operating at a very high level. Mm -hmm. Um, very focused on what they wanted to achieve. Yeah. And I just tried to soak it in as much as possible and, and, and learn as much as possible about how to really conduct myself, you know? Like, what, what does it mean to be a writer, an artist? What does it mean to be a performer? What does it mean to be a, uh, someone who puts an album together? I want to play the big hit before we go, the, the, the early days, the one you guys did for Drake. I just want to take a listen to this. Sure. Just hold on, going home. How often do you get a chance to listen to this? Do you hear it ever? A little bit. Yeah. Yeah. If I was you, I'd play it on a plane every day. <laughs> <laughs> Next time someone asks me what do you yeah. do, I just hand the phone over. <laughs> that. Susan. That's what I do. <laughs> Susie. I made that. Yeah. Susan. <laughs> Can someone tell me how, how that was made? Uh that was um that was in Metalworks. That was with 1985. Mm -hmm. I think it was me, Maj, 1985, uh, in a room. 40 and Drake. Yeah, 40 and Drake. And we were just, uh, like, we were given the ability to, to go into a studio while another artist was basically recording his album and work on music. Um, and everybody was working on music. So uh, Party was in there. 85 was in there, 40, Drake. Um, so you get to meet a lot of people and you're just making music day in and day out and you know that it's it's an exciting time because you get to go home and you know you're going to be able to come back to the studio. And we made that out of that. Yeah. And it was it was Maj who had the, the idea of, you know, I got my eyes on you. Where, where did that come from? No idea, man. Really? I don't know, man. I really don't know. <laughs> where where did it come to you? Do you know where you were? Where you were? Uh... I remember it was like Pizza Nova. Yeah, no. Pizza Nova <laughs> on Dufferin. <laughs> yeah, no, I was I when I was living in the, the apartment that Forty uh, helped me with. Uh, I remember I didn't have any furniture in there really, and I had a piano bench, and I had a laptop, and I was just making demos on that piano bench with the laptop there and sitting on the floor, 
And that's just one of the ideas that came. Just came out of you like that? Yeah. I got my eyes on you. Yeah. yeah. I got my eyes on you. Yeah. Yeah. And mm-hmm. then it ended up, and then like, I didn't even really know what I made. 85 heard it, and then Jordan heard it, and, and it became something, and then 40 heard it, and he's like, do you know what you guys just did? And We yeah, didn't I, know. We didn't know. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Now, now with with life and with experience and things, we, we, I personally am more aware of when I really, really feel something. And I, I really appreciate the fact that I am able to feel at all. Um, yeah. It's a really strong marker of something translating. Beautiful. Definitely. Beautiful. Yeah. Uh, does your life change after that? Do you, are you able to go to your folks and go, I think yeah, you, you, you don't got to worry about me now? Yeah, 100%. I think everything changed and... A lot of people are involved in that change, right? Like, we all made the record, and there's a whole village that, you know, makes it reach the whole world. And I think that is a part of the life-changing experience as well. Because at the time, we we had no idea what that looks like. Or, you know, we we had made a mixtape that we put on SoundCloud that got a few thousand plays and, you know, got us to meet all these people that we're now working with. the next thing that we release reaches the world and changes our lives forever. So, yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. And there's yeah. no, like, that's why those things are so important too. just doing things, making things yeah. happen, believing in someone else, you know, believe in other people, really show up for other people. Jordan does that for me all the time. Anytime this album is no different. And 100%, it, it, yeah. it's, it's really important to encourage one another to, to, to do that because that's what pushes the world forward, you know. What we're looking 100%. back at looking, doesn't make it go around; it pushes it forward. L- looking yeah. back, looking back now, what what are you most proud of when it comes to the the history of this group so far with this record coming out? Ten years later, yeah, and we're still doing the same. Thing, yeah, you know. Yeah, I think that's and we definitely love something to be proud of. And even with what you were saying about after hours, it's like, you know, it, it's it's really a two way street, and I I, w- I wouldn't have it any other way. I don't think. You can't even think about that, but, um, you know, having Maj in the studio and in my circle and in my life, mm. it's, that's the most important thing. Mm. And I think that in itself gave birth to this whole new project. Mm. Um, he opened my eyes to, you know, potentially thinking differently about things. Mm. And I think that was a lot of the production that was involved in this project rather than, you know, musical production. I think mm-hmm. it was the conversations that we're having, the introspection, his his point of view is um, is very valuable to me and I, I admire it. So I think that's probably the biggest thing I'm, I'm proud of. Yeah, or, that sounds know, like it. Yeah, yeah, you're most aware of. Most you're, aware. Yeah, you're most aware yeah. of. Grateful, most grateful really. for. Grateful yeah. for yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, listen, I, I can't thank you enough for being here. I mean, I feel I feel so I feel so great about you guys i mean for one the the whole scene that you came out of in toronto you know i spent i spent a lot of time thinking a lot about this and just thinking that like for years the canadian music industry was trying to crown people and try to turn people and say these are going to be the next big things these are going to be the next big things but this crew out of toronto like trans yourself included Mm. in this just transforms canadian music forever with no one supporting you and no one from like the traditional industry supporting you changes music forever by putting your heads down and just making great art top mm. to bottom. The second thing that I admire about you is that it hasn't gone away. That mm. like the commitment to art and artfulness and like the balance of life and perspective and art is still here on this record. And at a time of 15 second TikTok clips, you're making beautiful songs and pieces of art. And I, I just want to say thank you both for coming oh, man. in, man. Big, that, that means so much, Tom. Thanks so thank much, you. guys. Thank you thank so you, much, yeah, Tom. You know, I really, I really appreciate, appreciate it. it.